Hi everyone and welcome to Tanya Jane English. I'm Tanya. Do you wish you understood more phrasal verbs? Today I have seven phrasal verbs I'm going to share with you and help you to understand them better. So let's get to it. One of the biggest things that students tell me they have difficulty with is phrasal verbs. I totally understand that. Since I've been learning Spanish, I have a difficult time translating a lot of verbs. And come to find out, a lot of the verbs that I've had difficulty with are phrasal verbs. The other thing that I've noticed is that in English we use the word to get all of the time. I hear it all of the time, and it can be translated into Spanish, it seems like a million ways. Of course, it's not a million ways, but once you understand phrasal verbs, and especially the one I'm gonna help you with today, to get, all of these things get easier. So let's start with the first one. To get on or to get in. The thing that is tricky about this one is that little preposition on and in. We use these in a way that is a little bit confusing because as you probably learned, on means on something, to be on it, and in is to be in something. In this phrasal verb, that doesn't quite translate. So for example, we say, I get in the car. That makes sense because you're actually getting into the car. So if someone says, I get in the car, you understand. But if we wanna talk about a bus, a train, a plane, or a bicycle, now we have to say, I get on. I get on the train. I get on the plane. I get on the bus and I get on a bicycle. Getting on a bicycle makes sense because we get on the bicycle to pedal. However, the rest of them we actually get into the bus. Nevertheless, we have to say I get on the bus. All right, let's look at number two, get along, get along. The reason I decided to do this one second is because in England, they might use the previous phrasal verb, get on, to mean the same thing as to get along. So for example, in the United States, we say we get along with someone when we have a good relationship with them. In England, they might say they get on with someone when they have a good relationship. So here in the United States, you would hear someone say, I get along well with Mary, or do you get along well with him? Whereas in England, you might hear, do you get on with her? Or do you get on with John? I'm not from England, so I don't know everything about that one, but when I was visiting, I heard that more than once. Number three, get away, get away. We can use this phrasal verb in more than one way. One of the ways we use it is when we want somebody to go away from us or to leave us. So you might hear a young child say, get away from my toy. Child or adult, you'll hear people say, get away from that. So for instance, if I don't want anyone to be next to the fire because I'm afraid that they will get hurt, I might say, get away from the fire. Or I might just simply say, get away when I want somebody to leave me or go away from me. Another meaning of this one, which is a little more positive, is to get away as in to take a vacation. If you've been working very hard and you haven't had a chance to relax, you might say, oh, I really need to get away. Or you might hear someone say, 
It was great to get away and go somewhere else. In this way, we basically mean to take a vacation. Number four, get out. This one goes back to get on and get in because when we need to leave our car, we say, I need to get out of the car. But when we want to say we need to leave the bus, again, it's different. Then it's get off. I need to get off the bus. I need to get off the plane. I need to get off the train. I need to get off my bicycle. Another use of get out is a little bit of slang. When somebody tells you something that you're surprised about or you didn't know about it, you might say, get out. Okay, for instance, let's say your friend got to go to a concert and you really wished that you had gotten to go. You might say, get out when they tell you, guess what? I got to go to the concert of my favorite band and you would say, get out, when was that? When you say get out, you're both saying I'm surprised or that's awesome and you didn't know about it before. Like, really? Okay, let's go on to number five. Number five is similar to get out, but this one is to get out of. To get out of. So we're adding that preposition of on the end. And that changes the meaning just a little bit in some of my examples. So the first example is when we want somebody to move aside. We might say, get out of the way. Get out of the way. We mean, please move so that I can walk past. But another way we use this particular one is when we want to avoid something. So for instance, you might hear someone say, I really need to get out of doing the dishes. In other words, they're trying to say, I really want to avoid doing the dishes. I don't want to do the dishes. Another example might be, I really hope that I can get out of doing my homework this weekend. In other words, this person is hoping that they won't have to do their homework this weekend. All right, number six, to get over, to get over. So we know that over means something that is above something else. It's this hand is over this hand, or my hand is over my head. When we say to get over, we're talking about recovering from something. So you could hear someone say, I hope that you get over the flu. This person is hoping that you will recover from the sickness. Another way that we might use this is to say, she is finally getting over him. We don't mean that she is over him. We mean that she doesn't Think of him so much. Maybe they were dating and then they broke up and now her friends are happy that she is getting over him. In other words, she's ready to date someone else. All right, number seven, to get down, to get down. We have more than one way to use this phrasal verb as well. We can actually mean we literally want something or someone to get off of something. So you might hear a parent say, get down from there, when they mean physically move yourself off of there. Another example might be, get down from the counter the counter in the kitchen. They don't want their child to be on the counter, so they say, get down from the counter. Another use is a little bit different. When we say, get down, we can sometimes mean, 
that we are depressed or that something is depressing. So for instance, you might say, this book is getting me down. What I mean by that is this book is a little depressing for me. When I read it, I feel sad or down. Another example is this kind of weather gets me down, gets me down. Maybe the weather is cloudy and rainy, and for some people that could be depressing. Personally, cloudy rainy weather is one of my favorites, but that's because it's sunny where I live all of the time. Okay. What are some of the phrasal verbs you're already using that help you to express yourself? And what are some of the phrasal verbs that are still confusing for you? Let me know in the comments below. And if this video was helpful for you, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. When you subscribe, here's a little tip. Click on the little bell that's next to the subscribe button then you'll get a notice every time I upload a video. I'm uploading videos every Saturday and a quick short video on Wednesdays to help you improve your English. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.